Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the famous Apollo Theater. It's part of this year's 2014 Harlem Jazz Shrines Jazz Festival presented by Jazzmobile here at the famous Apollo Theater here in Harlem, New York. Educator, composer, as well as pianist Arturo O'Farrell tonight is playing some brand new music from his brand new record on the Motema Records imprint entitled The Offense of the Drum. And these are some very important compositions. One in which he encompasses a lot of musical influences around the world as well as brings a hodgepodge of guest collaborators on this record ranging from DJ Logic to the great Donald Harrison as well as VJ Iyer. I sat down earlier and we talked about how long this process took to put this record together which he started writing these compositions back in 2007 as well as talk about his role as an educator as well as keeping this music fresh and alive to brand new music audiences around the world. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Mr. Arturo Farrell and the Afro Latin Jazz Orchestra live here at the famous Apollo Theater here on the Pace Report, live here in Harlem, New York. You know, Arturo, this is probably one of the most courageous pieces of music that I've heard in a very long time. And I'm saying this because you're doing some very music forward elements with the whole Latin jazz movement. Tell me, first of all, how did you conceive this project? The Fence of the Drum? Yes. Well, I was uh, looking at uh, some... Uh calls for grants for uh, music to perform at the opening of a band show for Marcus Garvey. And in the process of uh, looking at those grants, I did a little research and, re and remember this, that Marcus Garvey used to have some drum circles. And, uh, and then that neighborhood got gentrified. <laughs> and then, the, you know, Harlem, man. <laughs> and those drum circles were thrown out, but it wasn't just that those drum circles were thrown out. I mean, they were arresting drummers and confiscating drums and and then I started realizing that this had happened all over the city, that in Central Park, uh, anywhere where there was a large amount of money 
in high rise uh, real estate, drummers were thrown out. And it got me thinking about, like, well, you know what? And it wasn't just the fact that it was also the way it was done. It was the mayoral administration at the time, which was just brutal in its uh, oppression of people of color. And, and, you know, it got me thinking about my sons and me and what what we do. And we're drummers to a sense. You know, we're musicians. We play music, man. And then it got me thinking about how the drum is a really potent political symbol. It's a really potent, it's, it's more than just potent political symbol. It's a powerful tool. The drum is a religious instrument. It's a method of communication. It's a political weapon. It's used to oppress. It's used to liberate. And it just occurred to me that more than anything else, man, <clears throat> we are drums. Human beings are drums. We have a heartbeat, man. It keeps rhythm. And when we put our hands upon the skin of a drum, we're taking the rhythm inside of us and putting it out there, externalizing it. And I, f and I feel like that's an incredibly powerful image to me. And so the offense of the drum became about so many things, but it came about the fact that the drum is subversive, it's political, and it is what we should be. Just like our heartbeats should beat, they should speak out against things, speak up for things. We should all be activists, we should all be clear and outspoken and real about what's going on in our nation today. You know, you have incorporated 28 styles of percussion, and this is an 18-piece band. You know, composing this is not a small feat. No, it's uh, it's crazy, man. I still haven't learned how to, I still haven't learned how to prepare for the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still up at the last minute, staying up all night, putting little dots on paper. But you know what? It's that's just the process. If you do things the smart way, you plan ahead. But if you do things the Arturo way, you wait till the last minute. But nonetheless, the work needs to be done, and it's hard. It's painstaking, and I'm really trying to. I'm really trying hard in my life to write music that is deep, with from deep within me, and not that I think will like pander or that people want to hear or that. I'm really trying hard to make every note what I really want it to be. I'm not trying to think of ease or safety or whether this one will like it or that one will like it or the musicians will find it easy to play or whatever. I mean, I'm at the point in my life where I just want to play music I love with people I love for people I love. Now, I understand that you started, really started writing the music this 2007, 2008 in a series of concerts at Symphony Space. Well, The Offense of the Drum is called from our new music series in Symphony Space. It's called Musica Nueva. And for uh, seven years, we've been putting on, we've been closing our seasons with concerts of new music, which, by the way, they said, man, no one's going to come. Nobody wants to hear hard music. Nobody wants to hear new music. Nobody wants to hear experimental this or that. And we found these concerts to be the most successful ones we have. We found these concerts to be the ones that people love. Well, you know, we mix up a, a, a Spanish bagpipe player with a tabla drummer, with a turntable, with a... You know, and people love it because they realize that, that they're not going to get this music from institutions that don't believe in taking chances. They said this to Max Roach, Abby Lincoln. They said this to Sun Ra. They said this to, oh, Roland Kirk. And I think with you bringing the whole Latin music element to this, you're shaking up the, the academic world with this too. Well, because I don't believe in jazz. I don't believe in Latin music. I believe in music that comes from Mother Africa and, and, and that is filtered through many cultures and many countries and many geographies. And the music that binds us together comes from Africa. And so for me, it's really, it, 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 I don't see Latin. I don't see hip-hop. I don't see jazz. I don't see, I see music that really comes from deep within that kernel, that, that germ of an idea of what swing is, that first syncopation, that change in 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 uh, uh approach to time you know what it's funny because i've been thinking a lot about this lately it comes from your life it comes from your approach to day-to-day -to -day activities it comes from the rhythm of your existence and I man some people try really hard to hang on in in in, in Euro european cultures we try really hard to denote the minute and the second and the space between them too 
But in African-based cultures like Cuba or New Orleans or, man, people just walk through their days. Well, their days just expand. And somehow they found the secret to swing. They found the secret to making those days expand so that an hour can be three weeks. And they're not worried about this second or that minute. And that's a beautiful thing. And I think that that's why, we, that's why we're drawn to music that is based out of African models because it, it freezes, bro. It liberates us, man. It takes us out of the tyranny of the urgent and, 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 and the urgency of the time. It's just, it takes us and sets us free, man. And sometimes I listen to that mind, I want to cry, man. Because I feel that freedom. Logic, you are on Arturo's brand new project, yes. and I want to know how he approached you with this, and what was your thought about contributing to this? Uh, well, Arturo is a good friend of mine, and uh, you know when he when he reached out, I was just like, wow, this is no question. You know, I really was excited to do it, and you know, the whole idea of it, of him, you know, talking about the concept of drums and bringing it all together, the rhythms and stuff like that. It's, it's also kind of what, what, what I do as well with my band, you know, incorporating different rhythms and sounds and textures and stuff like that. And, you know, it's music, you know, so when he reached out, I was just like, you know, I would love to be a part of that, you know, I thought it was something cool, different and, and you know, unique, you know, and hip as well. You know, you have a composition in addition to as the oppressor and as liberator. It's a political piece, but you also come full circle with They Came, which is kind of an amalgamation of hip hop, raggedy And I understand that this is about the Puerto Ricans, how their nationality was very important to the American culture. Yeah, I think that um, this came out of a concert that we, we did, and I want to make it a regular one. Uh, that celebrates hip hop and poetry and spoken word and New Orican Poets Cafe, um, and we just had, you know, but it was different because it's not. We didn't say like, here, poets, we're gonna let you rap over this beat. We actually sat down poets with the Rangers and had them co-create something that really was seamless and interdependent of each other and dependent on each other. You know what I'm saying? Like the words really come, and in particular, this piece spoke to me by Chilo Cajigas uh, and Jason Linder. And it spoke to me because it was really, the words really are incredibly intertwined with the musical uh, composition. 
Then the second, the second thing that spoke to me is just, I mean, you could substitute Puerto Rican for Irish or black or, or Dominican or Chinese. The struggles of, of, of immigrants who come to this country and the way that they're expected to act and the way they refuse to act because they, they, they survive. And not only do they survive, but they become leaders, you know. And, that's, and that to me is beautiful. That's, that's exactly why this, you know, that's exactly what makes this a great nation is the immigrants, is the people that come here and then become American because they realize that they have only taken their place along a long line of people who came before them that came from somewhere else and lived their lives so that we could have the achievements that we have. I'm, a, I'm the son of immigrants. I mean, I'm an immigrant. I was born in Mexico. My, my people definitely struggle, man. And, and we, we're trying hard to, you know, it's hard for Hispanics in this nation. That, that there's no doubt. It's a really different scene. I'm trying going to Arizona. <laughs> I, could, I could be stopped walking down the streets of Phoenix, and if I don't have citizenship, they could throw my ass in jail. Well, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. And you have a governor and a, and a, a sheriff down there that, uh, Jim, Jim, Jim Crow. Yeah, oh, Sheriff Harapayo, <coughs> Governor Brewer. That, I mean, there's some backward folks. I'm sorry, man. I know I never get to play <laughs> in Arizona now. But, but that's a problem, man. And, and that's why I was talking about what I was talking about earlier. We are drums. Every human being is a vessel and a drum. And what we beat out, what we speak, what we say, what we support, that is our statement to life. And we are, com we are composers and inventors and creators and communicators. And if we don't speak out against insanity like that, man, what are we going to do? <laughs> You know, Artu, as I sit here with you tonight, <laughs> I, I, I think about your father because tonight we're celebrating your new work, but we're also going to be commemorating your father's big, big suite as well as Randy Weston. How does it feel now to be in a situation where you are composing and arranging 
mind-boggling music like your father was over 50, 60 years ago? Well, I understand why he had a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I don't write anything like my father, and I lived in fear of being compared to him, and I realized that I have none, none, none of his trademarks as a musician. But I have his spirit and the aesthetic that he taught me and the aesthetic that he left the world is that music must progress. He, and, you know, he took writing assignments not as an opportunity to get through or get over or get easy. He took writing assignments as an opportunity to stretch his chops, to do something new, to do something different, to really handcraft something that was vital and important. Um, I never knew my father had flown it in. And that aesthetic is such a part of my life, man. It's such a part of what my work ethic is. My work ethic is do it, take the chance, throw down. I don't, you know, it might not, it might not fly. Well, I remember one time a guitar player said to me, you know what I like about you, Arturo? You're always taking chances, just like your father. And that meant more to me than someone said, man, you're great. But I'd rather take chances and fail than play the same boring music all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I ask you that because I'm listening to this album and you're orchestrating four generations of musicians. I'm talking about DJ Logic on the hip hop. You got Donald Harrison. You've got VJ Iyer on this. And I'm like, wow, your father was dealing with Charlie Parker and Machido and you're dealing with this generation's great jazz artists. It's funny because tonight... Um on the uh, Afro Latin Jazz Suite, we're featuring uh, Rudresh Mahantaba. And I mean, I think this gentleman is fierce. And I think he, his, his, his prowess on the instrument is fierce. I mean, it's mind boggling. And, 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 but that's not even it, it's his concept. And the same thing, I, I know that when Charlie Parker came out with his music, you know, uh, Louis Armstrong called it Chinese music because he couldn't understand it. And people looked at Charlie Parker and went, what? What are you doing, man? And he didn't know how to be polite. He didn't know how to be polite. Rudrash Mahantaba does not know how to be polite. All he knows how to do is speak the truth through his horn. I mean, that's, that's exactly why I do what I do. I, mean, I, I don't emulate that era. I don't emulate my father in that sense. But I know the spirit and the aesthetic. And it is about collaboration. And if I was scared, man, I should be scared of Rudrash. That's how bad he is. But I'm not scared because we're going to try something different. We're going to try something new, we're going to try something beautiful, and it's risky. Risky business, baby. But I don't know how to do anything else. But. We sit here on the 80th anniversary of the Apollo, the fourth annual Jazz Shrines. And your Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance is based in Harlem. I mean, there's a very serious rudimental element to jazz in this history. Why Harlem? Harlem is, as it's always been, the center of much controversy, the center of much synergy, the center of much change. New York is increasingly becoming a hostile place, and but there are pockets in Harlem. <coughs> excuse me, there are pockets in Harlem <coughs> where you still see what looks like the same 50, 60, 70 years ago. And I think that's really important because we need to hang on to what's real in our lives. New York, more than ever, needs to hang on to the mom and pop stores, the bodegas, the immigrants. More than ever, New York has to really remember what it was built on. And Harlem is such a reminder of that, of that spirit of innovation. And, the you know, the clubs, man, the after-hours joints, the rent parties, the history, the people that lived here, the people that grew up here, the people that raised their children here. I mean, it's, you know, it's just... It's so deeply a part, and it's different than New Orleans. Because for me, New Orleans is more Caribbean. It's more African. New Harlem is really the United States. It's really New York. Harlem is fast, it's furious, man. People really, really set up their lives and take root here. And so, I mean, they do down there too. But I'm just saying, it's, it's just, it's not, it's just, it's really an amalgamation of all the powers and forces that we have here. And I think that's beautiful, man, because we got we to gotta remember this sacred ground that walked on. We talk about me and my father and all the people that, man, 
I'm, I'm walking on sacred shoulders. I'm standing on sacred shoulders, man. That should, you know, that should is scary to me, man. I want to be respectful. You started the Afro Latin Jazz Alliance out of education, as well as the moving forward of not just the cultural aspects of your heritage, but just keeping the music out there in new ways, like what you're doing with your your compositions. We um started the Afro Latin Jazz Alliance. We have a, a little joke around the office to support the unsupportable, to support vision-driven art, vision-driven education, vision-driven preservation. Not so that we become nostalgic and create museum replicas, but so we create a future, a music that is born out of a tradition that has a future and that is looking to what it does not understand and what it does not know. Because that's the only way you preserve the past and that's the only way you leap forward into the future. If all you do is do what you do well, shame on you. You have no business. You have no business pretending you're, you're, you're doing something new. If you care, if you really care about, if you really care about Duke Ellington, if you really care about Fletcher Henderson, if you really care about Charlie Parker, you'd be working with Rudresh Mahantapa and Vijay Iyer and Donald Harrison. Because <laughs> that's, that's the spirit, man, and that's, and that's, and that's why I created the Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance. We, we needed to find a way to play that, teach that, preserve that. That'll do it again for this very special edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Apollo Theater here in Harlem, New York. It's part of this year's 2014 Jazzmobile's Harlem Jazz Shrine Series. I'd like to personally thank the talented Arturo Farrell for his time, also the wonderful staff here at the Apollo, as well as the staff at Motema Music. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.